What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the brand new Nike LeBron 15. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys, make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler, but with all that being said, let's get into it. So today is not only the first day of the NBA season, it's also the launch day of the Nike LeBron 15. This is a sneaker I've been heavily anticipating because I think this is one of the best looking LeBrons since like the LeBron 10. To be honest, I think we've all been experiencing that sort of knit upper fatigue. Every basketball sneaker that's been coming out and honestly a lot of lifestyle sneakers that have been coming out all have knit uppers and it's kind of just getting old and kind of getting played out. But even though this upper is a one piece knit construction, it's pretty different than anything else we've seen on the market. And honestly guys, in hand, these are fire. But without further ado, let's jump right into the review. Here they are, the Nike LeBron 15. As I mentioned before, this performance sneaker utilizes a one piece knit construction. The entire upper is covered in what Nike is calling battle knit. And right off the bat, you can tell that the battle knit is very different than the fly knit you find on most Nike sneakers. First off, it's a lot thicker and gives the shoe a lot more structure. And that of course is partially due to the underlay that they've put underneath the battle knit. But the knit itself is actually significantly stiffer and significantly stronger than what you find on your regular fly knit. It's also a lot less breathable too, but they're always trade-offs. This is the first LeBron 15 to drop, and they're calling this light tan colorway the ghost colorway. And as you can tell, the entire battle knit upper of the shoe is draped in this light tan color. There isn't any variation in color on the upper of the sneaker. However, you can distinguish the different parts of the upper of the shoe by the knit pattern. The center of the toe box is covered in this flat diamond pattern, and as you move farther out on the toe box, it gets a little bit more 3D structure. On the medial side of the toe, you do have a slightly darker area to indicate that the battle knit is a little bit stiffer there. That's of course to provide some reinforcement for your big toe. Moving back on the shoe, you find this much beefier battle knit, which is supposed to resemble chain mail, or at least that's what the Nike designer said. These individual nubs do have some give to them, but the overall structure is a lot stiffer than the rest of the battle knit. This is actually my favorite part of the shoe, which is kind of surprising because when I first saw images of it, I really thought it looked really whack. And that's usually what happens when you see leaked images of a shoe. However, now that I'm looking at it up close, it kind of reminds me of like dragon scales or something kind of badass, which I think is dope. And let's be honest, LeBron is one of the most badass players in the league, so he kind of deserves a badass looking sneaker. And I know the few LeBron haters who are actually watching the video are gonna hate that I said that, but I'm sorry. The reason Nike cooked up this battle knit is because LeBron really liked the feel of fly knit, however, it just wasn't strong enough to support him and give him enough durability to last an entire season. I mean, let's be honest, LeBron's probably not gonna be playing in the same sneaker more than one game, but it was important and probably necessary to give LeBron a much more durable and structurally sound material. Because I mean, that dude's huge and he's fast and he plays really hard in his sneakers, so it's important that the shoe can keep up with him. Continuing up the shoe, you have these really beefy white laces held in place by this tan fly wire. It's the same fly wire system you have in the LeBron 14s, which is not bad. It does tighten the shoe when you tighten the laces, which is nice. And if you aren't familiar with Flywire, basically what it is, is it's these little wires right here that are connected to the laces on one end and wrap around the inside of the shoe. So when you tighten the laces, it actually pulls the whole shoe together. I love the Flywire system on shoes that don't have tongues because it really needs it. Without a tongue, there's really nowhere for the shoe to go. So if it didn't have the Flywire, the laces would probably be useless. Underneath the laces, you have a different knit pattern yet again. It's a lot softer than the other battle knit on the shoe and that's just to give you some give when you tighten the laces. On the ghost colorway of the shoe you have this nice tan leather pull tab. At the base of the pull tab you have LeBron's logo debossed into the leather and at the top of the pull tab you have 15 in Roman numerals. One last detail on the pull tab is that you've got witness debossed into the back. Inside the shoe you have a tan insole that has a bunch of Roman numerals. On the top of it you've got 15 obviously for the LeBron 15 and on the bottom of it you've got 23 in Roman numerals to signify LeBron's number. The shoe itself is pretty well padded especially around the ankle area which is nice because it does provide a lot of support. Speaking of ankles, I was just watching the Cavs and Celtics game. I'm definitely sending my thoughts out to Gordon Hayward. That was an awful injury. It's really unfortunate to see that happen, especially in the first game of the season. All I can do is wish him a speedy recovery. But getting back into the sneaker, there isn't much in the way of padding from the midfoot to the toe, and that's okay because the battle knit does conform really nicely to your foot. As for fit, I'd say these fit true to size. They did run a little bit long, at least for me. It might be different for you. But as I always suggest, if you have a chance to try the shoe on first before you buy it, make sure to do that to just ensure that you're getting the right size for you. Of course, this is a one-piece construction, but the ankle area does have some pretty solid give, so it's not too hard to get your foot into the shoe, but it is kind of a struggle. You've got this nice white accent around the top of the ankle, which is a little bit stretchier than the rest of the battle knit. Moving around to the back of the shoe, you've got another pull tab in this tan leather with LeBron's signature debossed into the material. At the base of the heel, you've got one of the most interesting accents on the shoe, which is this TPU heel counter. It's got the same 3D battle knit texture, which is a nice touch, but the most interesting thing about it is that instead of the Nike swoosh being 
nothing on the side of the shoe as you'd usually expect. The Nike swoosh is sort of hidden on the back of the heel, which I think is kind of interesting. The swoosh is accented in this glossy white material, so it does pop a little bit, but it's definitely an odd placement. But I gotta be honest, I do like how subtle it is. Moving down the shoe, you've got this darker tan midsole with white speckling. Moving down the shoe, you've got a couple different air units spread throughout the midsole of the shoe. Nike says that they've developed a new kind of air unit specifically for the LeBron 15 that's a mix between Zoom Air and Air Max cushioning. They did this to provide a lightweight ride while also having great impact protection. You've got a large air unit in the forefoot, probably the biggest air unit on the sneaker. You've also got a pretty beefy one in the heel as well. And then if that wasn't enough, you've also got one in the midfoot to provide just a little bit more impact protection. The outsole of the shoe is covered in this pretty aggressive diamond traction pattern. It's actually kind of sharp to the touch, which I didn't expect. I don't know how this is going to perform because it is translucent rubber and Nike doesn't have a great track record with translucent rubber. And although the rubber compound does feel pretty stiff, each one of these little spikes are actually pretty thin, so I don't know how long they're going to last. Finally, rounding out the outsole of the shoe, you've got LeBron's line logo in tan in the heel. Overall, I think the LeBron 15 is actually a pretty decent looking sneaker. I have yet to play in this shoe, so I can't speak to performance just yet, but I do think for lifestyle wear, it's actually not bad. This is the first LeBron in a long time that I would genuinely consider wearing as a casual sneaker, which is kind of crazy to say. The ghost colorway is definitely clean. I'm personally looking forward to the ashes colorway, which is sort of a salt and pepper upper, which I think looks a little bit cleaner and will probably go with more of what I wear. But this colorway isn't bad. If you guys are interested in picking up a pair of LeBron 15s for yourself, I believe the ghost colorway is pretty much sold out. It dropped on Nike.com. I picked up my pair from Kith. However, there will be a lot more LeBron 15 colorways dropping in the future. So if you can't grab this pair, just wait for one of those guys. I've got to say, from the short time just walking around in this sneaker, it's surprisingly comfortable. I actually really like it. It's very tight and it's kind of constricting at first, but for a performance basketball shoe, that's actually a good thing. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's throw these guys on feet and see how they look. That's pretty much it for the video today guys. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the Nike LeBron 15 and whether you're planning to grab a pair for yourself. If you guys are interested in supporting what I do and the channel, make sure to check out some of the merch I've got available at sethfowlerstore.com. The links will be in the description below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to me, Seth Fowler, if you wanna see more content just like this and follow me in all other forms of social media. The links will be in the description below.